Hello, Mr. Angus Wangus here. Want to make a quick vid uh, to replace a vid uh, I made about a year ago that I had to remove for different reasons. But uh, explaining Ed's uh, flywheel here for people, or my interpretation, um, because I see others out there and I think this is close to reality, what I'm about to show you. I'm going to give this video the same title as uh, the one I did previous. <laughs> but anyways, um, there's a lot of speculation about his wheel and what's going on with it and what he's doing. And this is a very revealing picture. It tells us a lot as to what's going on here. Now we've been working with the uh, bucking coils on the PMH next to the wheel. And in this picture here, you can see Ed's PMH next to the wheel and Ed next to the wheel, right? And there's this mass of iron and a hook and lots of things going on here that are kind of strange it seems, but uh, basically what he what what this generator is is a homopolar motor or a homopolar generator as well as the uh, electromagnet the EM uh, generator aspect of the bucking coils. But basically he used the bucking coils in on the PMH next to the wheel as well as capturing a homopolar aspect of this uh, device homopolar generator now uh, Tesla worked with studied homopolar generators and he called them homopolar dynamos but um, he had an upgrade involving the disc in the middle now Basically, what a homopolar generator is, and this is a typical design. Uh, these are magnets right here on either side of a conductive disc, right? And this spins all of this, right? And what you do is you contact the outside edge of this disc. Tesla said uh, if, the in, if the outside diameter of that conducting disc is within the outside diameter of these magnets that would be best just for people to know uh, I've read a lot about this kind of stuff so. um, anyways this spins uh, the magnets there's no um, variation in the magnetic field with respect to the disc but however when you contact the edge of the disc and the shaft you get a voltage right positive and negative and it gives a very high current at a lower voltage um, something that needs to be replicated I've tried in the past and I'm gonna do it again in the future but Ed's wheel incorporated this effect this homopolar effect and I've been speculating about this about his wheel for a couple few years now but um, I wanna point out what's going on so we need, in order to get a homopolar effect, we need to touch the center of the magnet, basically. That's what that was there. Oops. Oh, where are we going here? Sorry. Basically, that's what that is there. That's the center of the magnet where that, where that connection is made. This is the south end. This is the north end and this is the center null point of that magnet and in a homopolar generator you contact that point and you contact the shaft as it spins now again for a couple years now I've speculated about Ed's wheel and um, one thing I'm very sure of is that the very center of that the middle of this wheel was filled with water and the reason why is because these magnets, these V magnets on his wheel, Ed did everything for a reason, right? And he's got the centers of those magnets. These are U or V magnets and they come and they come that way. But he's got the centers of each of those magnets peeking into the center of that wheel. And if he filled it with water, he could make a frictionless contact with the water, basically contacting the center of the magnet. Now, what he, here we go, here's the picture. Now, we see that he's got a hook hanging down, and if this was filled with water, he could 
bring that down, touching the water, making a frictionless contact. Um, and that's what these guys do with these homopolar generators is make frictionless contacts um, because it's better, right? You have to contact that moving surface so they make frictionless contacts. A man named uh, Bruce De Palma made a homopolar generator. <laughs> Haven't heard much from him lately. He's gone now. I don't know what, you know, whatever. This stuff gets buried. But uh, he used a mercury contact to make a frictionless contact, right? So that's what they do because it's a better design. Now I think that's what Ed was doing. If it was filled with water, you contact the centers of those magnets. Um, now also to go with that, Michael Faraday's first, well this is his very, this is the first electric motor ever made on the planet, right? Uh, Michael Faraday's homopolar motor and the design of it was such that the current comes in this way comes up magnets involved but what he had was a rod hanging down and in this liquid I believe might have been mercury but uh, as he passed the current through here this rod went around and around now Ed's is a little different design but I think he followed that, I think he borrowed from Michael Faraday there with his hook making a frictionless contact. But uh, this is what I see and this is what I clearly see his uh, wheel having this homopolar aspect. The centers of those magnets being accessible. Now finally to go with that, just to show the idea, uh, I kind of drew a picture. Here's a replica sort of his wheel, right? Now he's using the bucking coils on the PMH here, right? But here's just a simpler look at it. Basically, he could dip this hook down into the water, make a connection with the centers of these magnets, right? Just like a homopolar uh, generator. This is all iron. He uses chain and it's all iron and it comes around and it chains around. Then it's out of the picture. And then we see a chain again hooked on to the null point of his PMH. Now I think this is very important because it's definitely a homopolar aspect to his wheel. This is what I've been mentioning uh, to people is that there's more to this and this is it. So this homo homopolar aspect as well. He's dipping down, contacting the centers of the magnets, made, making a magnetic circuit of sorts, right, for the magnetism, and he's attaching it to the null point of the PMH. As the magnet passes by, this iron core becomes a magnet, and this is the null point. So he's connecting null point to null point, and this is another type of magnetic circuit, right? So he's getting a homopolar aspect. He's reducing any sort of losses. And with the mass of iron he has up here, he has a bigger surface area to pull energy into the system. Uh, maybe just one final look at his setup here. And I mean, he's standing there. He wants it like this. He's got all of his iron up there collecting uh, replacement mag magnets, the individual magnets for the system. But I think that this will give an added boost to what we're doing. Uh, now also, um, this tool he has here, I think people have clearly understood that this was used in his moving of the rocks. So he's wrapped a chain on it, right? So maybe he's wrapping chains around the rocks, but why is it here? Why is it next to the iron mass? Why does it seem to be unraveled and added to the iron mass? Uh, it was pointed out to me in the past, I think by my buddy Steph in the UK, uh, he could be treating that iron for what he does moving the stones. And just the speculation there. 
But I wanted to make this video to replace the other one and uh, give people some ideas of what I think is going on with Ed's wheel. This is very clear to me now, actually. So, um, But, you know, I don't know the exact mechanism of the iron in this system and how it collects that energy. Maybe, maybe none of us do. <laughs> but we should figure this out because this is very important. And you can see he's probably dipping down making that contact and then if you look it goes out of the picture right the connection circuit sort of he's he scraped the paint off this bike so that that chain makes contact right there but we have this little chain right here on the back side of the PMH and where does it go <laughs> I've already tried connecting that null point of the PMH to ground using iron. Also tried connecting it simply to an iron mass with no results either way. But my next investigation in this regard, I'm going to connect it to the centers of the magnets as they pass uh, the PMH and see what happens. Maybe we can get an effect um, with only one coil set. <laughs> we'll see. Anyways, wanted to share that with everyone. Um, I'm working on my things today. I'm a little tired today. What I'm going to do is package that up nicely and make it safer. Thank you, everyone, for your suggestions. Oh, I'm going to do my dishes. And I have a test to do here on the wheel. Um, I think it will be very cool. Anyways, there you go. Wanted to share this with you. Take her easy, and I will talk to you later. Oh, one last thing. Hooray! We got the tack. Yay! It was in the mailbox this morning. Yay! <laughs> All right. Talk to you later.